Hi, this is Jim Clary, and again, welcome to our YouTube video, AirMod Training. In this video, Sarah will first describe the input file, then we'll give you the opportunity to pause your computer while you get to your modeling example directory and get ready to execute it, and then you can follow her along as we go through the execution using that input file to generate an input file that will be used later on in the AirMod system. Just one quick reminder, you'll see that the explanation of the input file can get rather detailed. Uh, don't be too concerned about it at this point, because remember, uh, a real advantage of these videos is you can always go back to them for reference as you need to as you work through your actual projects. So I suggest that in this one, that you just follow along with Sarah. It'll give you a good, broad um, idea of what the input file looks like. But uh, don't be too concerned about sweating all the details at this point. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Sarah. I'm Sarah with AirModTraining.com. I'm going to show you how to set up and run AirMod in this training video. The AirMod modeling system contains the AirMod dispersion model which we will refer to as AirMod for the rest of this video. Before you can run AirMod, you need to run the preprocessors to generate the meteorological data files, the receptor file, and the building parameters. We have training videos to show you how to set up and run all of these preprocessors. AirMod is EPA's preferred dispersion model for regulatory modeling applications. AirMod determines short-range impacts for a variety of sources in all types of terrain. The input file structure is similar to the structure of the AirMap input file, and for our example run, the AirMod input file is grouped into five pathways. The control pathway is where you specify the overall job control options. The source pathway is where you specify the source information. The receptor pathway is where you specify the receptor information. The meteorological pathway is where you specify the meteorology options and the output pathway is where you specify the output options. Each line must start with the two character pathway ID shown here. Each pathway ID is followed by an eight character keyword and one or more applicable parameters. The AirMod input file for the example run is named ex1 underscore pm25.inp. The first pathway we'll go over is the control pathway, so we list CO in the first two spaces of this section. The first line must start with the keyword starting, and the second line contains the Title I keyword. This is where we enter the title of the project. The third line contains the Title II keyword. This is where we enter the secondary title for the run. The fourth line contains the model option keyword. This is where we define the dispersion options. The default keyword specifies that we want the modeling to be based on the regulatory default options, and the CONC keyword specifies that AirMod will calculate concentration values. The averaging time keyword is where you specify the averaging periods you want to evaluate. We chose the 24 hour and annual averaging periods for this run. The pollutant ID keyword is where you specify the pollutant type. We selected particulate matter with a diameter less than or equal to 2.5 micrometers, or PM 2.5. The run or not keyword identifies if you want to run the model or process the setup information only. We chose to run the entire model. The last line must end with the keyword finished. And I want to point out here that the pathway ID is only required with the starting and finish keywords, and it can be blank for the other keywords like I have shown here. And we're going to continue with this pattern for the rest of the input file. And now that we're finished discussing the control pathway, you can see that the first two columns start with the two character pathway ID, followed by an eight character keyword, then the parameters. The next pathway is the source pathway. The first line, again, must start with the keyword starting. 
The next section defines the source locations. The first two lines are comments that start with two asterisks in the first two columns. These are used to label the parameters for the location keyword. Following the location keyword, you list the source ID or emission point name, the source type, the location, and the elevation. The next section defines the source parameters for each stack. Again, comment lines are used to label the parameters, and following the source parameter keyword, you list the source ID, the PM2.5 emission rate in grams per second, the stack height in meters, the stack temperature in Kelvin, the stack velocity in meters per second, and the stack diameter in meters. The included keyword is used to include the file with the building parameters that was generated with BPIP Prime, and the path to the file needs to be included with the file name. The source group keyword is used to specify the individual source groups. Under this keyword, you first list the group ID and then the sources to be included in the group. In this example, we want to determine the individual impacts from stack 1 and stack 2. And the all parameter specifies a group that includes all of the sources that are being modeled. Next, the source pathway must end with the finished keyword. The next pathway is the receptor pathway. The first line starts with the keyword starting. The included keyword is used to include the file with the receptor information that was generated with error map. Next, the receptor pathway must end with the finished keyword. The next pathway is the meteorology pathway. The first line starts with the keyword starting. The surface and profile file keywords are used to include the surface and profile meteorological data files that were generated with AirMet. The surface data and upper air data keywords are used to describe the surface and upper air meteorological stations respectively. The station number is listed first, and this is the five-digit WBAN ID since our station is a National Weather Service station, then list the start year, followed by the station name. The profile base keyword specifies the base elevation for the potential temperature profile. Next, the meteorology pathway must end with the keyword finished. The next pathway is the output pathway. The first line starts with the keyword starting, and the receptor table keyword specifies the selection of the high values by receptor for output. The all average keyword specifies that you want the listed high values for all averaging periods being processed. Then you list the high values you want in the output. We listed the first high and the eighth high. The sum file keyword specifies the summary file where you want to save a summary of the high ranked values. The plot file keyword specifies a file that will have a format that is easily read by plotting programs. For short term averaging periods, first list the averaging period, then the group ID, the high value, the file name, then the file unit. For the plot file keyword for annual averaging periods, list annual for the annual averaging period, the group ID, then the file name, then the file unit. The file unit must be greater than 30. In this example, we listed different file names under each plot file keyword, so the file unit for each entry must be different then the output pathway ends with the finished keyword. And that is the end of the AirMod input file. Thank you, Sarah, for that excellent explanation of the input files. We're now ready to, for you to actually run the program that will generate an output file that will be used later on as we move through the AirMod modeling system. So, put this on pause until you're ready, you've got your computer ready, you've got your modeling, um, directory open and you're ready to follow Sarah along as she walks you through the program execution. To run AirMod, we need to go to the AirMod folder. 
I'm going to show you the commands needed to run AirMod in the command prompt, and then we'll use the batch file. AirMod requires that the input file be named airmod.inp. So we need to copy our input file to airmod.inp. And then you type the path to the executable. and the executable name and then hit enter. I've sped things up here, but you can see AirMod processing each day of 2014 and this run should only take a minute or two to finish processing. AirMod generates an output file named airmod.out, so it's a good idea to copy that to something else so that it won't be overwritten if you run the model again. And at this point, I like to delete airmod.inp and airmod.out to clean up the folder. And if you were to run the batch file now, which all you need to do is type run underscore airmod.bat, you will see it will go through the same process and generate the same files we just discussed. Now that airmod is finished running, we can close the command prompt. Going back to File Explorer, the output file contains a detailed summary of the inputs and processing information. And the PLT files are the files that can be easily read by a plotting program. We're going to go over the summary file now. The modeling options are summarized at the top of this file and the results are presented at the end. So here we show the summary of the maximum annual results and you can see the three source groups that we defined in the input file. So the average concentration under the stack one source group is the concentration generated from stack one only. And then it lists the receptor location, the elevation, and the hill height. Under the stack two, the first high is the maximum concentration from stack two only and then the combined impact is defined under the all source group. So the next section is the first high results of the 24 hour averaging period. So again, we have our three source groups and under all we have our maximum combined impact. And then the last item we defined was the eighth high for the 24 hour results. And again, we have it listed for the three source groups. At this point, you've successfully completed an AirMod run. Now we just need to post-process the data. If you run into a problem with any part of your AirMod modeling project, we offer online AirMod training help that you can purchase from airmodtraining.com. During our session, you'll be able to ask us any question related to your AirMod modeling project. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, AirMod Training, so you'll be notified when we upload any new videos. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.